Hey guys, welcome back to uh, Max Plane Dawn of War Unification. And as you see, today is a big day. It is the faction guide for Death Guard. A lot of people have waited for the guide for this faction. Um, these are the Chaos Marines that honor the grandfather Nurgle, the Chaos um, God of Disease, Decay, Sickness and Death. As you can see here by Typhus, Typhus uh, is probably with his scythe and whatnot. Um, before we jump into the guide, a quick disclaimer. There are quite uh, opinions uh, on how Death Guard are. They are too strong, they are too weak, they are... I don't know. Um, feel free to um, give constructive questions and ideas in the comments, but every, anything that will say Oh, this is just stupid because that that is just overpowered or this is just weak uh, will be ignored or even deleted if too uh, too offensive as said I am open for some ideas um, what is too strong or what I have forgotten in my guide as the usual but yeah please stay calm and constructive but yeah, without further ado, we will jump into... Ah, before I forget, um, I always talk what makes them stand out um, for from other factions. As you would suggest from Nurgle, these guys are slow, but really tanky and have a lot of uh, damage over time weaponry. Um, so yeah, that's their thing, the poison and disease, of course. But now, now we will jump into the safe game. And here we are in the safe game where I have set up uh, everything possible for Death Guard. That is, um, when you look at first, isn't as much diversity as you might think on the if you go one path. But there are a lot of different paths, and you have companies. Um, you will see. I will go through everything. Um, but before we go through the buildings and stuff, I will tell you about the resources and unit caps. The resources are pretty standard. You have requisition, you have power, you gain requisition the standard way, capping points and stuff, uh, getting listening posts up, having uh, to upgrade for them. Similar uh, power is generated by power generators that look really fancy, but fa function as standard uh, generators. And you have the uh, um, power upgrades in the tier two and three for them. The unit caps are standard 2020. Um, you start off with 10 0, which is also pretty standard. You can uh, upgrade your infantry cap twice via an upgrade. Um, also, you can upgrade your vehicle cap, your support cap in the machine building, I think, uh, four times to plus five. But you get also plus three from your machine building itself, the Bane Pit, I think it's called, and your Various champions give you plus one infantry cap um, for your, that's the leaders for your I um, infantry units. Okay. Um, as I said, there are a lot of companies, but I will go through all the units and we'll talk about some, um, let's say, where they are uh, able to get and not. But uh, there is um, special company thingies that I will go through in the end. Okay, so we start off as the usual with the buildings. I have the buildings all prepared here. You have your pretty neat looking HQ that gets more uh, poisonous <laughs> the more you go. Um, in your HQ, you can see you can uh, select your company, one out of seven. You get your leader, uh, your builder, your uh, Nurgle cultus, and depending on the company, you can also maybe get Typhus and some zombies out. You can upgrade. Um, it pretty standard ish to a tier three the tier four research is uh, then done in the cesspit but um, speaking of equivalence you have the temple of disease which is your chaos temple you have gift of repository which is, which is your chaos armory then you have your tribulation mount which is your uh, demon building from chaos then you have your bane pit which is your machine pit and the cesspit is your crater uh, summoning thingy so you have equivalents they look really nice um, they are all custom made um, you have generators of course what all buildings have in common is that they have an aura that 
um, decrease enemy morale and increases your uh, regenerate uh, regeneration rate of your units, which is similar to the chaos uh, marine trait, but it's all active in tier one as uh, far as I'm uh, uh, know. So um, this is an advantage you could say over the um, chaos marines in that point. Um, we see later on the tech tree, but uh, one thing that is also different that is more similar to uh, Empress Jordan is that you need the barracks and a armory to tech up to tier 2. You cannot uh, skip it and you cannot build armory before you have a um, barracks. So you have a very linear tech tree um, to tier 2, which um, sets you, let's say, limits you in some ways um, your tactics. But we will see that later on the in the build orders as well. Um, these are your standard buildings, then you have your um, uh, generators, your bigger generator, they look really nice, I have to say, all poisonous and stuff. Your listening posts, um, where do I have one? I have this um, blight thingy, they do not shoot bullets, they have the blight thingy and your um, bigger one um, has a bigger blight thingy, I don't think it has a last cannon, not sure actually. Um, defensive wise you have turrets, the, the turret demon here um, also shoots out um, disease nonsense, can be upgraded to the turret demon has, um, what is it called? That's basically less cannons but they are called differently for for Nurgle and they also have a different um, sound I would say. What is it called again? It says less cannons but they, they are called uh, differently. And then you have defensive wise your Feculent Gnolmo and oh boy this thingy is amazing. Um, you can build it anywhere. It costs only 75 requisition. You get 25 requisition back when you build it. And um, yeah it has an aura um, that, give me a second, it in that buffs and damages enemies and does it buff your own ah, da, 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 reduces corrosive disease affects all known warp entities in close proximity vehicles it states that it also affects vehicles but vehicles take almost no damage from it at least and yeah the thing is that uh, if you build a new one um, give me a second somewhere it has this little timer at the bottom if this timer is full it can Oh, this, um, yeah, we see one thing. It can automatically attack. You cannot target yourself. Automatically attack anything that goes in uh, this area. And it will shoot the seed and rebuild another fellow can knoll more. So you can, they reproduce, you could say. But as you see, have seen here, at, let's say, five to ten minutes, like the maximum, they um, die, basically. So they have limited life and they are limited to five in total, I think. Yes. Um, ah, five per HQ. But yeah, these things are really important and needed and advised in every Death Guard uh, build order, be it offensively or defensively. Really good. Um, one thing about the turrets, they cannot be built outside of your control area, but the Gnolmore provides um, control areas. So if you want to build a turret offensively, you f will need a gnoll more first anyway. Yeah, that's about the buildings. All I want to tell really, um, I have your equivalents, but I can state it again. You get your infantry, you get your upgrades, your demons and your vehicles. And here you get your um, relic units, you could say. That's uh, different than uh, Chaos Marines. Here you get your relic unit only and a few researches uh, your tier 4 research and your demon prince research but uh, the actual um, terminator and uh, stuff you get from your barracks okay and now we will go over the units and i hope i hope i will uh, remember everything <laughs> um, and uh, can show you everything because i have seven allies here to uh, represent the seven um, companies, so yeah, uh, let's hope that the cycling through the companies will work out. The builder unit is the Poxwalker Slave. The Poxwalker Slave has quite a lot of uh, health points for a slave. Um, is relatively slow, 
um, and cannot be uh, labeled to work faster. So you want to have two in the beginning to build really fast, you could say. Um, yeah, that's your builder, nothing special here. There's um, Fly Swarm. This is your detector unit in tier one. It is really mobile, uh, really slow in the um, turning a bit. Um, it can not fly, sadly, <laughs> and can be uh, de um, detect stuff. It can also use this Fly Swarm to debuff an enemy, but um, it will basically uh, swarm the enemy. So basically the entity will die by it. Um, really, really handy um, for detection. Similar to a skull probe, you could say. Um, it is not built from your listening post, it is built from your knoll moors, which you will always want to have, as you may remember. Then we have here your main commanders, you could say. Your main commanders are important to know that the, um, these are your main commanders because every company gives your main commanders the various auras. I will talk about which auras uh, they provide when I go through the companies, but the aura that is stated in your company will be uh, given to these um, for commanders. You have your Plague Lord. Your Plague Lord is your Chaos Lord equivalent, you could say. He has a size, he has a bolter, he's really tanky and has some abilities. He has uh, the grandfather's blessing which is basically a heal for a squad or a single entity heals for quite a lot has a long cooldown though it has a passive damage amplifying aura which is similar to your chaos lord it can be researched in tier 2 and he has this uh, airstrike thingy that can be researched in tier 3 uh, does not cost anything will send out a poisonous airstrike in the area really you see the area is quite quite large indeed and he can uh, become a demon prince if you research your, the stuff in tier uh, 3, that is. That is true for all companies but company 4. Company 4 is considered the demon focused company where uh, I will show you later the uh, or the name Malik and Blake Caster can be turned into the Eater of Life, which is basically a little buffed up um, Chaos Prince. But as we um, talk about the uh, Blake Caster here, he is your Sorcerer equivalent. Pretty neat model indeed. He has um, some abilities which I consider mostly not as good, but he has a quite good range attack. You can see it, it actually shoots here because um, he was looking there. The range attack is really neat. Uh, really good in melee as um, the sorcerer is as well. His abilities are your manasma, miasma of pestilence. Uh, he reduced damage from ranged and melee. So I don't know if it also affects um, uh, squads that he is attached to, but basically uh, damage reduction, which is not as, um, how should I say, it's cool to have, but nothing like doom bolts, which are um, imminent threat. If you research the gift of conta contagion, you get this one. Um, it reduces damage of nearby enemy infantry. So this is something in melee. So you want to have him stuck to a melee squad maybe and then have this activate so you take even more reduced damage. This reduces damage you take and this reduces damage the enemy deals. So all defensive now. Then you have Curse of the Libra, nearby enemy. Um, significant drains health of nearby enemies. So this is, you can see here, it's all melee based. That's why I'm considering the abilities not as good because your sorcerer only has 1.2k uh, health, which is, isn't bad for a commander. You can also get a commander upgrades for more health. Um, give me a second and see how much it actually gets more. Uh, 300 for him and uh, 400 for him so it's it's okay you can get him uh, a bit more tanky but generally sorcerers are not the tankiest lads um, but all is done better or uh, increasingly better by the fifth fourth spell which is one spell more than the standard chaos the sorcerer has it's pox walkers that's an <sighs> Not a debuff, but you need to uh, left click on a target infantry squad. If you uh, target it, there are will be some demons spawning and it's the uh, squad of plague birds will be summoned there for free, which is really nice. Demons will arise. 
I like that one. It is tier three though, and the black um, bearers are okay-ish. They are good in tier one if you can access to them. Um, one company has it. They are okay in tier two, but probably not as good in tier three. So you see why I maybe consider this not the best. Um, so so overall. <coughs> Okay, the, la the next one would be this Herald of Nurgle. We will talk about him uh, in a second because I would need to change the company. We will talk about Typhus first. Typhus is available in the first and seventh company if I'm um, right here. I need to drink something because Nurgle seems to bless me right now. Mm. He's a tier three. Uh, commander, I think he has uh, two abilities. Oh, sorry. Oh, I thought I need to uh, need to sneeze here, but <coughs> damn you, Nurgle! I want to uh, I want to tell people here. Don't don't bless me right now. You have your Menasma of Pestilence ability, which um, summons a plague of flies, clo um, choking weapons, whatever. Makes it hard for foes to land hits, so basically reduces enemy accuracy, reduces damage from range in melee. Okay, so it's similar to. Uh, it's actually the same, you know, some of pestilence. Ha! Huh. And then you have the destroyer hive, um, temporarily damage enemy infantry. So it's uh, this big AoE damage that normally the um, uh, Chaos Sorcerer has really need. Um, abilities here. He also detects infantry stuff and the most important thing is he boosts zombies. Zombies have, we will talk later, infantry that has a chance to revive, similar to Necron infantry you could say, but if you have Typhus around, I think the chance to revive is 100% and uh, he also increase, increases the damage of um, zombies around him. Now we will hope that I will get to the Herald of Nurgle uh, pretty fast, but if it takes too long with the uh, skipping here, I will cut it out. And here we are back. I just noticed something for you if you're interested. It uh, shows you in the tip which computer player you are skipping to, which is really nice. I will use it from now on here. so. <laughs> will not need to keep, uh, cut out everything here. But yeah, the Herald of Norgal is a um, demon leader, you could say. Looks really interesting here. It's, um, yeah, you know him maybe from the uh, Chaos Demons, but he has different abilities here. He um, starts with the Shivering, sh Shriveling Pox. Um, enemies um, reduce maximum health. Um, that's interesting, really good, so melee based as well. And he shares the researches for the first two, or the, the, the second and the third spell from the clay caster. So if you re research one, you take get the other one as well. Um, that's because um, you can only have either the plague caster or the Herald of Nurgle. I will check something real quick. Yes, I have researched everything, but you see that uh, uh, Herald of Nurgle will only get uh, three spells indeed. So you get the Stream of Corruption, which is the second one. Um, drain health. So you, you drain health from an enemy, that's really nice. Feel the effects of health drain immediately. Um, it does not say if you get the health back, but yeah, it's basically a, a damage over time AoE around him. And then you have the Cloud of Flies. Road enemy vehicles. Their present lowest armor. So it damages vehicles, as I say here. No, it, it reduces the armor uh, for a long duration. So um, they also minor damage. So it's um, um, long duration damage and armor reduction, which is really nice. Um, single uh, target, however. So really. Interesting indeed. You have something against infantry and melee, but also range um, anti-vehicle stuff, which is nice. And then you have this um, amalgamation of sub-commanders, you could say. These two are from your barracks in tier 2, and these five, uh, they are called f 
Foetidvirion, or uh, please excuse me with the names. These are special leaders which you can have three of, and these share a cap of two, I think. We will start with these two ones. This is your foul blight spawn here. Really interesting looking guy with a big backpack of um, all the good stuff, I guess. Has this um, poisonous uh, weapon here as well. Here. Uh, decreases enemy movement speed, can't find in melee, and has a special grenade, a head grenade. Um, the high damage against vehicles and buildings. So it's an, you could say, a melter head grenade or something in that sense. So um, really useful in that, I have to say. And then we have here the Taliman, which um, decreases enemy commander's ability recharge rate. So not the best. Um, in that, but he also increases the weapon accuracy of the squad he's attached to, so it deals more damage. So, can be used um, very good if you attach him to, uh, let's say, um, Havocs, which are your uh, missile launcher dudes, or your later on your Terminator squad. So, and for these, I need to jump to computer six again. So, where's computer six? Three. So, so we stick in here, computer six again. And now we can talk about all of this. We will stick to these uh, special guys for now. This is your Biolux Beautifier. Um, has a special grenade. It sees upon the field of battle, nothing special, but has a special grenade, it states. So the special grenade is the Hyper Blight Grenade. Um, damages enemy infantry and slow down them temporarily. So it's a slow AOE grenade. Uh, it doesn't state that he has something special other than um, that he's really effective in melee. Um, then we have the Plague Surgeon, which is basically an apothecary you could think of. Death Guard apothecaries here and enhances the re regeneration rate of nearby en uh, enemies uh, infantry. So really nice to have as your guys already regenerate quite fast if you have the Plague Surgeon around the day. Um, you generate even faster and lastly you have the noxious blight spawn Increase the movement speed of the squads he's attached to which can be really good for melee squads of course and decreases enemy morale ability um, Recharge rate that makes no sense. I think he decreases enemy morale uh, It's a really nice unit to have on your melee squad So um, if you have two melee squad a plague surgeon and a blight bringer together could be a very good option whereas if you have um, a range squads you want to have Taliman and your file blight spawn. The file blight spawn in general because he deals quite good damage on his own. Then you have these two um, guys here from your barracks. You have a sigil of decay barrel which makes enemy units become more vul vulnerable to all death guard units. So basically um, kind of uh, reduces enemy um, armor I would say but only around him, so melee based as well. And then you have the icon bearer of the icon of despair bearer. Maybe it would sound better the icon bearer of despair. I don't know. Um, he makes that enemy units take additional damage at close range. So they similar. They 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 do pretty much the similar uh, stuff, um, but also in melee. I tend to not build them. Um, if I have sub commanders that are not my main commanders, I would one use one of those. So these are all your various commander units out of the way. Um, note that these commanders do not get a special company auras, however. We will now jump over to the various infantry units you have yourself available. You have your cultists, and the cultists are a bit special in that they have a really good ranged weaponry and these one-handed shotguns they have have really nice uh, shot sounds as well. They can uh, get grenade launchers, but only if you have the third company available. You can get a cultist champion, which is this, this cool dude here with this staff and this bolt pistol. He can detect units as well and is really good in melee. And if you have researched there, um, there's an upgrade dedicated for um, cultists that will make their melee stronger but also gives them the doom blast ability that uh, makes a uh, Nurgle the guy explode and deal a lot of AOE damage. Poof. 
But also you see, also friendly fire, as most um, Death Guard stuff uh, um, tends to do. Yeah, but must be researched. You have not uh, it available right, right away. But you can see here the regeneration is quite, quite absurd. <laughs> we will do it uh, one more time. Confetti time! Poof! Really nice. Um, another really early infantry you have access to in the companies one and four is your plague zombie horde. The zombie horde they look really um, not so fresh, you could say. They um, are not as good against anything, but they can slow down um, enemy infantry and can also deal damage over time, if I'm not mistaken. And they, of course, as I said before, they um, can reanimate, but they cannot be reinforced, as you can see here. So uh, if they are on the field, they stay as they are or they reanimate on their own, you could say. Um, other than that, you have access in tier two, uh, in tier one, um, either your plague marines, which are your ranged marine variant. They uh, start off not the strongest as they are really slow. Um, they get good weapon upgrades in tier two with the plasma gun and the melter gun and in tier three even better with the blight launcher. The plague spear is basically a better plague belcher, which is a flamer like weapon, but it's not flames, it's disease they, they spew out of course. Um, the Blight Launcher, keep in mind, does a lot of damage against infantry. Um, AoE damage, but um, also very uh, friendly fire as well, so uh, use this with caution. If you have melee squads around, you might not want to get a Blight Launcher, because it, you will kill your own stuff as good as you kill your enemy stuff. They have access to uh, Blight Grenades, which you can research, which is, as you might imagine, a damage over time grenade. And you get Nurgle's Touch. Nurgle's Touch is a general ability that all champions will um, give the squad. Uh, other than your standard um, rage ability from Chaos, this will decrease uh, emit damage taken rather than increase damage uh, dealt. Because it's Nurgle and stuff. And then you have your Assault Plague Marine squad, which seems the way to go in tier 1. Um, if I trust the good players. Um, they are tanky of course, they have good synergy with your Plague Lord healing and stuff and they can get a uh, charge ability in tier 1 researched if you um, uh, research one specific thing that I will show you later on. Um, they can also get grenades and Nurgle's touch so they can be really, really um, hard to be taken down if you have the leader around and a champion around so you have Nurgle's touch, you have a heal they have high health, of course, high regeneration. They can get um, some weapons like this axe, which is good against infantry. You have a maze, which is good against uh, vehicles and buildings. And then you have the great cleaver, which is uh, also very good against infantry, it uh, says. It has a chance to immediately kill injured opponents. I hope this chance is not as big because it would be a bit OP, but you can only get one, I think, with the weapon upgrade, maybe two. Where is it? You see here now live. Yes, two two cleavers, which is not not as much. In tier two, you get one of the most important squads of the um, roster, which are your Plague Havoc squads. Plague Havoc squads are basically dudes with rocket launchers enabled. They can get a champion. A special about that champion is that he has a power fist and a melter gun, so more anti-vehicle from him, and he gives the Nurgle's touch ability. These launchers can be upgraded. Uh, do I have it already or not? This one, the Pruted Missiles that change the Krug Missiles to Plague Missiles. So they turn this um, solely anti-vehicle melee uh, missiles to anti-everything, which is very nice. So you have no, sh how should I say, dedicated anti-vehicle squad. Now you have a squad that can deal with everything really. Um, the accuracy doesn't uh, tend to be the best, but um, if you attach one of these thingies here, like the um, Taliman, which increases the accuracy, they can deal a lot of damage. They do a lot of damage uh, even without that. Limited to two for uh, this reason. In tier three, you get access to Chosen. Chosen are available to all companies except one, which I forgot. <coughs> Later on, I have a really neat um, 
thingy for you. Um, we'll have it when I talk about the companies. This chosen uh, plague marines are basically standard plague marines with more health mm. and supposedly more DPS. They get the champion. They get um, only the first three weapon upgrades, which I'm uh, really a, a little, how should I say, uh, I don't understand why they got only three weapon upgrades, whereas their standard Varian gets um, five. But they uh, have more health and yeah, are more durable and also have the decay aura. The decay aura decreases enemy movement speed around them. Uh, as they are only pretty much ranged focused, um, this isn't the strongest as well. And the possessed marine, which is uh, available for all companies, but of one, I think it is two or five, which has not access to them because they are more machinery focused. These are just more or less standard possessed, um, quite fast for a death card unit, really good in melee. Um, yeah, and with the champion, they get also the Nurgle such, which can uh, help to save their lives in melee if need be. In tier 3.5, with the cesspit around, you can get two um, terminator squads, you get your plight lord terminators, which are your range terminal right? They have this mean looking cleavers and this storm bolters here. You can get the plight lord champion here in the middle, um, which gives them the Nurgle touch. They also have this decay aura, which um, reduces enemy movement speed. They can get access to plague spears and plight launchers, but also autocan reaper auto cannons, um, which I tend to get for them because auto cannons are nice cannot teleport and cannot be deep striked. The other Terminator variant you have is your Death Shroud Terminators. These guys look really awesome and are really awesome. Only can get five dudes, however. Um, they have good damage against pretty much everything, but... Ah, it also has something here that I have, haven't read um, already. Commanders, when attached to a Death Shroud Terminator squad, take less damage from range decks. Really nice. They also have the Decay Aura, which is now really useful as they are um, melee units. If they can slow down the enemy, the better. Really nice uh, unit to have. Really uh, um, nice. I <laughs> can't say more than that. They are uh, very very potent unit you could say okay now we will jump over to the vehicles for that i or do we jump over to the uh, demons i think we will jump to the demons now um as i do have um maybe we'll start with the small ones yes these are your um player four we will jump to in a second come on six Three, no, come on. Here we are. So four is the demon company. That's why I chose to put them there. In uh, tier two, normally you get access to the plague bearers and the nurglings, which are pretty much what you expect of them. Really, um, nurglings just uh, cannon fodder basically, and then you have plague bearers, which are tanky and stuff. I would never build nurglings to be honest. They are numbers, but. They, they just die too quickly. Um, the Black Bears, however, are really neat to have. They are tanky, they deal quite a lot of damage, even against buildings. The Company 4 is special in that they can have these two um, demons in Tier 1. How it is, I will tell you later. And they can also do these uh, nice looking glitchlings. They have also only 100 health, which is a bit more than your standard. Um, your standard Nurgling and yeah, they are your better uh, variant. They have these helmets for whatever reason. Um, maybe there's a joke going that I don't get. Um, for other greater demons, you have access to um, your Demon Prince and your Eater of Life. These are similar, only that the uh, Eater of Life has a little more health and is summoned by your Sorcerer, not by your Chaos Lord. This is from the Chaos Lord, but they have um, the same abilities with the demon, demon raw and they have this aura from the demon lord, from the chaos lord you could say, um, is research. The damage aura will affect both of them as well. They have also the company uh, special aura, both of them uh, have the special aura of the company they, you choose. Um, then you have access to, to a really big demons, which is Ulkaer, which is um, your great unclean one. 
who can vomit and stuff. Um, he has a puke that does AOE damage similar to the raw, has a stomp uh, which stumps units around and gives them damage over time. And um, yeah, we go over this in a second. He can also build Nurklings and Plague Bearers in the field. These are not summons, they are getting built with the same cost as you would build them in the building. And he can poop. He can poop and the poop is a um, a uh, you could say a building that does um, morale damage around, right? Or this is terrifying. So it's a fear aura this one has, but it will uh, yeah decay over time and then will <laughs> go away. Um, we will talk about Motarian when I go back to computer four in a second. He is your Primark Demon Primark unit, only available in. Company one and seven, maybe? I think so. He has a pretty nice model. He can jump. He has, um, it states, he's gifted all play company special auras. That's amazing. So all the different auras I will take you tell you later, he has around them all. So he has quite auras around him. Uh, other than that, he is a pretty awesome guy in melee has also a pistol i just noticed and yeah can fly uh, relatively uh, fast for a for a death guard unit okay now we will jump over to the vehicles so um we have now covered infantry commanders and demons and the vehicles is where it gets interesting when it comes to availability um there are a lot of vehicles as you can see here there are this is the main thing that, um, one of the main things that makes the companies uh, different apart from the aura and later on the relic units are the availability of vehicles. Your more or less standard <coughs> transport unit is your bloated rhino. Right now it can only uh, transport one unit by a herd that, that will be at some point fixed that he can uh, fit, fit in two units. This is very special as it can uh, access to poison launchers. Poison launchers are your normal smoke launchers that you know of, but they also do mild AOE damage to infantry in this uh, thingy. They can transport stuff and they can be upgraded once they get your poison launcher upgrade to have a melter guy on top and some uh, missile launchers as well. So they can be anti-vehicle, which is really interesting if you ask me. Um, also in tier 2 you have access to your Desecrator, which is your um, more or less standard Defiler. Has, um, however, this, what is this, an auto cannon, And this one side, maybe missile launchers, I'm not sure. Let's see. And this um, uh, battle cannon. So he has artillery possibilities, as we know from a uh, Defiler. You have also access to a Nurgle Dreadnought, which is uh, this mean looking melee guy has a, a wrist mounted evil looking um, disease thingy that's on the flamer that it all shoots disease. He can be upgraded with a multi melter or a plasma cannon. The plasma cannon is uh, quite late on in the tech tree, however. In tier 3, you get access to the Plague Burst Crawler, which is a pretty, pretty awesome artillery piece, which is good against infantry and gets big disruption and can be upgraded with, now that's the word, entropy cannons. That's basically last cannons and also a volley gun on the front, which is an anti-infantry volley gun. Yes, to be more effective, but I really like the side sponsor that it can be um, from Plague Spewers. Can be upgraded, yeah, so these are anti-infantry um, and these now are your entropy cannons to become anti-vehicle, which is really nice. Um, you do not want to have it at the front lines, um, however, but if you look at the arc, this is your artillery arc and this is your less cannon arc. It can defend it somewhat against um, am am armored attacks to it, you could say. Then you have a, then have your plague predator with one of the best voiceovers there is. <coughs> <laughs> This is um, special in the sense that it has, you, you can upgrade all his weapons from the auto cannon and bolter stuff to um, less cannons. Um, but also you can upgrade the side sponsors again to blight launchers. So you have anti-infantry 
uh, capabilities uh, with rocket launchers, which I really like. Again, the thing is still also a friendly fire damage by quite the large margin, so use it uh, with caution or just stick to the um, standard weaponry if you want to have anti-infantry. Um, a special unit for the company 2 is this Plague Dreadnought, which is uh, not a Nurgle Dreadnought, it's a Plague Dreadnought. It has also access to multimeters and plasma cannons, but this is more of your Hellfire thingy. It starts with the missile launchers and auto cannon, but can also get like twin hit glass cannons, which is really nice to have. Um, yeah, here you have the mean looking plasma cannon from this one. You can get it here as well, but um, the twin hit glass cannon is pretty nice. Um, the last vehicle you have access to normally is the Blight Drone. I will not jump over the computer, I will tell you what it does. It can, it's really fast, um, costs relatively less power, but a lot of requisition is fast, only takes up one pop cap. Um, only two companies have access to them, company 4 and 5. Um, can jump, so it's more of a skimmer unit, and can also decap. Has two weapons. Do the, um, to it. Um, I think I will need to jump to it anyway because I want to show that um, you see the two arcs here. To get the maximum damage you want to manually move it a little closer than it would normally go so you have both weapons uh, firing. The damage is really uh, good from this uh, unit so you might want to get it all the time if you play company 4 or 5. Um, now we need to go to Computer 4 again. Ah, I was too slow. So we will jump to Computer 4 in a second. Give me a second. Really nice that I noticed that here, or I was clicking all nonsense. Which is your bot fly here, which is um, looks like a land speed of Tempest in a sense, has entropy cannons and uh, the Splight Launchers, the Entropy Cannons are your anti-vehicle with big range and then you have your anti-infantry in low range. So if you want to deal with infantry, you want to get a little closer. Um, or if you want to deal with vehicles and uh, buildings, you can stay um, a little out of range. That being said, any infantry that has missile launchers or whatever, which can outrange this mi middle part here, will counter it really, really badly. And then you have a lot of vehicles which are your relic units. You have, depending on the uh, uh, company, different uh, relic units available to you. Um, the Crater and Kleeman and Motarian also counts as a relic unit. So um, you have four different tanks um, additionally. You have this Plague, Plague Reaper, which is basically a Bane plate um, with even more guns on top of it. Really disgusting, but awesome. Then you have a uh, Trophy Helios, which is a land radar with a uh, artillery piece on top. It can not transport stuff, I think, but it can use poison launchers. And then you have this one of my favorite units here, the Plague Tower. Just look at it. It's also Bane played with this disgusting tower on top. Has not one, not two, but three battle cannon like, so really big input. Uh, output of damage has this. Uh, these are probably um, Blake Spears, I decide. Okay, so very good at disruption and inf infantry can also carry stuff around in this little thingy here. But um, I would not want to go in there, in there, to be honest. And then, of course, you have your Pustulant Land Raider, which is vehicle most companies have access to. I think it's a bit a bit cheaper than your other relic units you have seen, which is more or less your standard uh, land raider has plague spewers, or what does it has? Doesn't state here, it has uh, less cannons, it has, has weaponry and can transport stuff. So your standard land raider, I think it can also use um, um, the poison launcher ability. And then you have a titan, of course, which is your Plague Feral Titan, which is a Warhound Titan, um, but Plague, you could say, this has this, um, does it state what it has? Um, no, but it has this anti-infantry layout, but can get turbo laser destructors for anti-vehicle. Has a leg stomp ability, which most Titans tend to have. You can 
and has this Juggernaut ability. Juggernaut ability, just to uh, remind you, has an increased cooldown over the Juggernaut ability from uh, the previous version. Oof. So with th this units um, covered, we will now talk a bit more about the companies because um, these are all units, but not all units have, uh, all companies have access to all units. I will now show you a little overview that I made. You can uh, see it in my drive as well. Um, the first page is about the commanders there. You can see that basically all companies have all access to all commanders, but the uh, uh, Demon Prince uh, is only available, or how should I say, for Company 4 you don't get the Demon Prince from your Chaos Lord, but your Eater of Life from your Caster. Then uh, here you see your infantry, and you can see that infantry is also pretty universal, except of zombies, of course. Um, and yeah, on the previous page you could also see where you can get Typhus. Here you can see the infantry, as, you ca as I said, is available uh, pretty much across the board, except for the um, zombies. And also you can see the two communists that do not have access to um, either chosen or possessed ones. And the last page is the most important one. Here you can see um, which companies get access to which vehicles and relic units. Uh, relic units are split and most companies have access to uh, two or three different relic units apart from uh, company four which has only access to the crate and clean one. This company also has access to the least amount of vehicles. These are all about demons and stuff. Um, your titan you can get in every um, company. But now let's talk a little more about the companies. I have a little page here written down so I don't forget uh, all the things. Company 1 we have talked already quite a bit. They have access to Typhus here. They have access to Zombies and the Aura the, it, uh, it's provided by the, the main uh, units is a HP Drain Aura which is really nice if you Consider that it also carries over to your Demon Prince and um, yeah, and you have Typhus as well as a really big uh, dude in the front line. So really nice. If you can stay next to an enemy infantry squad, they will drain their health. Um, company 2 has access to the special Dreadnought here, the, the Plague Dreadnought. Um, and has a special aura for the vehicles, which gives them basically the HP degeneration aura, which we knew from Company 1. This is granted to all your vehicles. As the, um, the AoE of this aura is really, um, how should I say, small. This is best used if you uh, go for melee dreadnoughts or melee um, desecrators. So you can, if you fight in melee, they will not only punch the enemy, but also drain their health passively. So best used with two those two vehicles. You may or may not want to use it with the Rhino, but the Rhino has not as much health as these units and you really need to park it smack bang in the middle of enemy infantry. But yeah, as I said, best used with these two units here. Um, and the aura for your commanders is an armor reduction aura. So also really nice to have. Company 3 is a little special, um, I need to think um, a second which, which uh, one I have given it to, was it this, no, this one, no, <laughs> this one, this is company, this is computer 2. So this was a pain to set up but um, it will pay off big time so I have to jump uh, in between different safe games and whatnot so you can see everything here in one fell swoop which is nice. Company 2 gives access to the grenade launchers of your um, cultists and also increases the range and health of your turrets. If you see here the um, the range is bigger now as you can see and you see the health 3000 from the standard 1.2k so it's more than double the health for your turrets really big focus on the turrets and with the land radar Helios which is an artillery piece and the grenade launchers it's a really defensive um, choice the aura they have is uh, the weapon range reduction of enemies around them which is let's say how it is it's most of the time not really useful 
but uh, pays off. You can, you can use it still if you want to have Nurgle, uh, uh, Nurgle Cultists with grenade launchers and really good uh, turrets and with an um, additional artillery piece. So really defensive um, mindset for Company 3. Company 4 is very special. Um, we will talk about it <coughs> in a second. We have it now here. What makes it special is... Where's my builder? I have no builder. Uh, you, s you switch the Temple of Disease in Tier 1 with the Tribulation Mount. So this is your barracks, you could say. And you have access to the Nurglings and Blackbirds in Tier 1 as well as the Herald of Nurgle. So these are your three units you can build in Tier 1, apart from Cultists and Zombies, of course. And in Tier 2 you can build the Temple of Disease, when you can then build all the other stuff around here. As you can see, you have no access to Chosen. This is more of a demonic unit, so you get uh, Possess, of course. And it's uh, the upgrades um, for Squad Cap increase and Command upgrades change also places. So you can get Squad Cap from this Tribulation Mount and you can get your commander upgrades from the Temple of Disease later on. Um, and one thing is that this, your sorcerer... Um, do I have him around? No, but I have to eat of life. Your sorcerer gets some buffs in the sense that he has... I don't know if he has more health, but um, the recharge time of all the spells of your sorcerer are increased, um, which is interesting. Um, if you have your Herald of Nurgle out, you cannot get a sorcerer so um, either you want to skip it or if you if the Herald of Nurgle dies you want to replace it with a playcaster because he is the superior choice. Mm. One thing to note about the demons which I forgot earlier the plague bios start with a maximum cap a squad size of four but if you uh, research the first um, upgrade for the Chaos Lord the aura um, they get a maximum of seven, I think. Seven by seven, tear down the heaven. Yes, seven. So they start with four. This has mainly uh, to do with the balance of the company four, um, so that you don't get seven uh, plague bearers for two cap in early games, which can be really devastating. The nurglings, plague bearers, and glitchlings can be deep strike as well. So really. Great offense if also coupled with zombies, one of the uh, more rushy starts you could think of. Um, company 5. Is it this one? Yes, Company 5 is Computer 5. How fitting. You will be there eventually. So, this company 5 is um, really strong as well. Ah, I forgot that the aura for company 4 is damage resistance of enemy around is reduced, which is really nice. It is similar to uh, armor decrease you could think of. Um, okay, but uh, company 5, the aura for your main um, units, your main heroes is a morale degeneration of units around, which is good, but not great. But what is great is that you have increased health for your Blight Drone, which is already really strong. Your Blight Drone, standard Blight Drone, the standard for Company Fee has 1.2k uh, health and this is 1.6k, so 33% uh, more health, which is really nice because this unit is potent as it is already. And the Desecrator has also more health. Um, the standard health for a Desecrator is 4.5k and here he has almost 6k health and can get Twindling Glass Cannons in Tier 4, which is really nice. <coughs> you have also 50% um, more health for your Foul Blight Spawn, which uh, to remember is the anti-infantry uh, guy with an anti-vehicle grenade and um, also the Beautifier here, which has the Hyper Blight Grenade and um, is really good in melee with uh, his evil looking knife and whatnot. Um, so this is company 5, they are all about vehicles as well. Um, then we have company 6. Company 6 is really cool as well, in a sense, computer number 4. Give me a second, we will be there in a second to see what, what is special about it. Um, come on. Company 4. 
has an aura that decreases movement around your commanders, which is one of the best auras. Um, this aura is also given to uh, the Blight Lord Terminators, which, funnily enough, already have a movement reduction aura and is the ranged variant. So the aura is not given to the melee Terminators, but the ranged, which I find a little odd, I have to say. But why do I show you these Terminators? These Terminators, as you may notice, have more models. Your Death Rod Terminators ca get maximum models of 7, now not 5. And your Blight Lord Terminators give you now, um, instead of 4 plus the leader, now you have 8 plus the leader, which is enormous amount of Terminators here. And they can get also more weapon upgrades. Normally you have 2 weapon upgrades and get one additional for with the upgrade here now I have five and one additional with the upgrade so almost every unit here can get now a reaper auto cannon reaper auto cannons for days as this upgrade to the terminators is a tier three tier three only upgrade um for the most games it doesn't matter but the aura itself the movement decrease aura for your heroes is really uh, a thing you might want to take um, all the time if you ask me really potent aura and then you have the company 7 um, the company 7 I have set up here which is computer number 1 funnily enough um, these are all about the plague belch or plague spewer thingy it um, increases the I, I read it here. Increases the damage of the plague belcher, the plague spewer, the plague sprayer, the plague sprout uh, gauntlets, and the toxin turrets. So basically, from the turret, the listening post thingy, from your botfly, the thingy, from your prob probably from your rhino, from the, your plague marines, you have your plague belcher and plague spewer. Um, chosen also have this, and you can also get uh, plague spewers on your terminators, which. Oh my god, look, they're awesome. They look awesome. How much range do you have? Jesus. Bigger range than I have, would have thought. And I also I think these two guys um, give also additional damage with the thingy. The, the big part is, I think, the turret with additional damage. And of course, your standard Plague Marines. You can get a pretty nasty tier 1.5 push with Plague Marines with... Um, Black Belchers, so they can deal a lot of damage with it. Um, the aura from your leaders is that they ignore cover bonuses, which can be overpowered in situations, but can be really weak in other situations. Okay, Oof. this was a lot of information. I hope you are still with me. We will now uh, jump into the tech tree where, uh, yeah, the tech tree is <laughs> a little um, complicated as well, but I hope I have given you a good over you with the little um, document about the unit availability but yeah and um, I see you in the tech tree in a second and here we are on the tech tree document as the usual um, I have put everything together and put it in the drive as well you can see that you can get um, or need to get your company out in the beginning so you can uh, start building uh, do I have made it yeah if you, you need to have a company to get uh, either your barracks or if you chose company for your tribulation mount um, I depending on the company you get the um, how should I say the uh, squad cap upgrade or your commander upgrades there um, yeah I have talked pretty much uh, about everything in game already maybe not about the upgrades upgrades um, you get in your Armory building are for the most part really good. You have access to uh, damage and health upgrades. The health upgrades are really expensive um, and only give you 10% health. But if you consider that um, all units have really high, rev, high health in the beginning, um, having even more health um, can make them uh, almost unkillable. So maybe it, it is worth it. But for the most part, you want to get your grenades and your range damage if you. Uh, have range units and this one here uh, give me a second the name is disgusting full disgustingly resilient it must is a must have uh, upgrade it um, increases the cost of your future plague marines however so first get all your squads out and then get this upgrade 
This upgrade increases the maximum health of basically all Plague Marine squads and most importantly if you go melee marines uh, gives them the charge. Um, your melee Plague Marines without a charge are okay as they are tanky but with this they can finally close the distance and also deal damage. This is the upgrade for your um, cultists which gives them access to um, the Doom Blast and also increases the melee damage they can deal. Uh, you have second tiers for the uh, health and range damage. These are your standard more uh, special weapons. You have um, this upgrade for your Havocs I have talked about already and then you have two upgrades here. This is a commander um, health upgrade and this is a DPS upgrade for almost all units. So um, the DPS upgrade is uh, I think really good and uh, both upgrades are really good to have I think. One thing you have access to if you activate hazards and booby traps are Minefields, the minefields are poisonous minefields. Um, there's no other way to have access to it. Okay, these are your buildings, um, the units I have talked about quite a lot as well already. Uh, here you have your commanders um, with all the abilities upon the special researches I just said uh, in the video, but you can see here that this research gives you access for uh, to uh, abilities for both the heroes here, the same for this one and actually for this one as well. Doesn't he start? He start with no ability. So this is why the difference. You get your first ability in tier two, your second in, in tier three and your uh, third in tier three as well. Interesting. Um, yeah, those guys for the most part have passive abilities and if you research grenades, they also have to grenade. So you need to research them. Um, yeah. Uh, for all your infantry you get access to the touch of Nurgle and in the various tiers you get um, various weaponry which is also pretty standard. Um, the demons, yeah as I said before also pretty standard-ish. And what is this passive again? Ah yeah this is the damage aura, uh, DPS aura. Mortarion here has true sight and the passive from all the different abilities. Your vehicles, I have um, said that already this passive is the uh, leech, the, the, the damage around. Um, what I could maybe say is um, your bonus units in survival are cultists, havocs, a for now uh, bugged dreadnought. He cannot get his weaponry as it is, um, as it is intended, so maybe that is something that will be fixed. Uh, really nicely voiced <coughs> predator and for the last you get uh, the great unclean one which is mm, probably not the best for survival but um, the most iconic unit for the death god so I can see where this comes from. Okay with these tech trees out of the way I will now jump over to the build order document. Here we are in the build orders. And as you might imagine, with a faction with seven companies, there will be quite a lot of build orders. Uh, in fact, I have eight. The standard build order here might not be the best build order. I just call it standard because it's for most factions standard to get like two range squads, uh, rather, how should I say, slim tier one to get a decently timed tier two. This is why I call it standard. It does not mean that is this is the, how should I say, um, meta best opener for this faction, especially that it is a very new faction. The real meta is not found yet, I would say. So, but yeah, the standard would be that you go with one of these uh, companies because the aura they provide is really nice. Just to uh, refresh it, this is the damage, uh, damage uh, over time aura. This is your, these two basically, this is your armor reduction or yeah the armor reduction of enemies this is your morale reduction the sixth one is the best one with the movement speed reduction um, you always want to get in the end three builders because you want to get your knalmos but you start off with the temple of disease get your um, ranged plague marine out your chaos lord and your second plate uh, your second plague marine out you get a um, gen up and two knalmos in either offensive or defensive positions later on you will add the 
uh, gift of repository will get your grenades you would want to have and your damage as it's really cheap um, the upgrade then you have to build one or two more generators before you can get to tier two this one is the probably better build in the for the most part in the current meta it's assault plague marines basically melee plague marines it is similar to the first one as you can see here i would recommend to go with the sixth company to have the uh, movement speed uh, decrease from your chaos lord you will also start with the chaos lord hey, there's a little thingy missing here which i will add and upload you want to get three cultists which is also pretty standard in this because these are your ranged support for your assault marines the assault marines don't have any ranged uh, weapon capability so you want to have uh, some range and the range for your, from a cultist is really good um, you get one generator the standard two gnormos Later, if you have the gift of repository up, you want to have the your uh, chosen up to get the gift, uh, the touch of Nurgle for uh, additional durability. But you also want to have this um, resilient resiliency upgrade to get charge for them, and also um, blight grenades, and maybe maybe this is more of a luxury upgrade. Also the health upgrade. With additional generators you will be, will be able to afford all of this and uh, tier 2 later on then i have here an opener if which you can do with uh, company one or four depending uh, which company you want to choose um, the, those have access to zombies you will start with three uh, cultists again for the range support range cultists in death guard are really strong with the shotguns your standard um, three builders as well you only build a generator and two knollmores but then you will use all the requisition for your um, cultists and zombies you can build basically build two zombie squad right away this will fill up all your supply but you can also um, queue up a third zombie at some point because if one of those dies you have immediately a new squad you cannot reinforce them just to uh, say it again then you can uh, add support with either your Chaos Lord, if you chose Company 1, or your um, uh, Demon Lord guy from a mount, if you chose Company 4. Get um, your Armory and maybe one more generator before you get to Tier 1. Really interesting opener. Um, other thing you can do is cold the grenade launchers. Uh, for you will always need Company 3, because only Company 3 gives you access to it. Um, I found it best, I have to say, that you start with the Chaos Lord, so you have something on the field because your grenade launchers are really late because you need to get your um, barracks and then your armory. You cannot go armory first with your as you would go with your standard Chaos Marines. So that's why I have only two cultists in the beginning as well so I can get the armory up at some point if I would skip the chaos lot I don't have any melee and durable thing on the field which you want to have later then you will add more cultists with grenade launchers up to four why not five because you would want to have one um, melee plague marine with your chaos uh, lord to have some some meat shields on the field you could say and of course you want to have your um, cultist upgrade because it gives you access to more grenade launchers and um, as your company three it does not hurt to get one or two turrets and strategic positions as they have so much health and so much damage another thingy here i'm missing ah <coughs> max what is going on i will fix this of course um, the next one is cultist spam one of the i think not so strong openers uh, it is strong in the sense that you have a lot of thingies on the field right away something you could do uh, with chaos marines as well i recommend to choose a uh, company three because you can get grenade launchers later on and as you can see here i chose to give three guys grenade launchers and two will go melee there you want to have these your leader here you will um, build later on your barracks and armory in your barracks you get your chaos lord as support melee support <coughs> can be attached to one of your melee squads or be uh, separate and then when you have your armor you want to get your um, cultists upgrade so um, they do more melee damage and can use the doom blast with some more generators you can go to tier 2 
as the usual. This one here is one that I found really good against the AI. I don't know how good it is against the player. I haven't <coughs> used it yet. This is a company four exclusive opener, a demon spam. You only get two cultists, so you have uh, still some supply left for two plague bearers and one squad of zombies. As I said before, you can queue up additional squad of zombies if this one dies or one of your cultists dies, you have immediately a replacement squad. Later on, you want also have your commander here because it, uh, it helps quite a bit. You can be attached to one of those squads. You will then later on just do your standard tech stuff. There's no need for upgrades in your armory as none of the armor, uh, the upgrades will affect your demons. So you want to head tier two as soon as you can basically. In tier two, I would suggest to um, either get your commanders out, which I found not as good, but um, get uh, vehicles out, which is for this company only the Desecrator and your Blight Drone. The drone is the one obvious choice here as range support for this uh, melee only stuff. You can also have a heavy tier two, as I indicated in the video and in the in the re uh, replay, I say in the in the safe game for Company Seven, which increases the damage for this plague spewer, plague plague belcher here. <coughs> so you go for two cultists only, so you have enough um, uh, pop cap to get uh, three um, plague marines later on. Uh, you get, can get additional Black Marine when you have the champions, as each champion increases your squad cap by one. But only later on in the beginning, you want to have a generator and your standard two Gnall Maws. <coughs> you will also want to have a Chaos Lord at some point and the leader for your cultists. Why you want to have a leader for the cultists? Because those are your meat shield melee um, units that will keep your units away from your Plague Belchers firing. Um, you also want to have basically all upgrades in the book apart maybe from the health upgrade because the health upgrade does not affect cultists so you want do not want to have it as these are all range based units. Maybe you will need uh, even one generator more to afford all of this uh, upgrade nonsense but it's it's a really strong uh, opener indeed. And last but not least you have your um, how should I say it's more or less standard tier two rush which is best done by company two four or five why i choose those one company two um, gives your vehicles the hp degeneration so if you use this to rush tier two you want to have a dreadnought or desecrator out as soon as you can company four and five gives you access to um, drones which are really strong in tier two especially if you can get them up really early um, and for the company four you can also rush quote unquote glitchlings which is not really strong and can get a really strong caster unit and the malif in the caster the buffed up caster uh, the strongest options to rush tier two are either company two or five in my book Oof. also quite a lot of input here i will um, fix the two thingies i found this one here and um, there was one as well missing somewhere else that i will find um, when going through, I think it was um, here. These two I will fix and re-upload. And as the usual, I will finish up the guide with a um, replay, a replay from none other than number 56567, five, Mad number, the Mad is the clan tag. Um, he's really good. He also uh, enjoys Death Guard quite a lot. He said that he hasn't got a lot of multiplayer games in but there is one uh, good one where he uses his more or less standard opener which is more or less this one but we will see how exactly he does it in the replay and here on the replay um, this is as i said mad number which shows company five versus creed who plays the inquisition um, chooses the inquisition pass as well from the demon hunters um, but we will stick to um, numbers point of view of course he opens with the temple of disease he chose company uh, five as i said company five just to remind us all is the one that gets uh, the more hp for defilers and the drones and has the morale degeneration aura 
So he probably opts to get uh, some drones and defilers out in tier 2. He more or less goes the uh, um, opener that I said. Um, another slave, two, uh, three cultists and another slave and then we'll probably get the leader out here. Yes, so it's pretty much uh, exactly my build order f now, for now at least. Um, two cultists gives you the benefit of having good map control, especially good on a map like this where you have very spread out um, natural uh, points here so you can get the one in your base but also send one out on the far as well or you can uh, send one uh, early on to harass one of your enemy outward points this is the one the two things you can do um, for now he will build the listening points of course um, i would like to have one uh, cultist already uh, on the front or in the semi front building a um, tree somewhere in the in the vicinity of this critical maybe because then it could uh, mature already and then send in um, the seeds as it's uh, fully grown we have now the stormtroopers you may notice that the stormtroopers deal more damage now that they um, than they did before this is a balance adjustment to keep the inquisition to let's say, make the Inquisition uh, capable again, as it was one of the weakest um, things to, show, to choose early on. But anyhow, a um, little bad move here. They um, throw a grenade, which is good, but now need to run away. You will see that they uh, will take some damage from the shotguns, even on the move. Um, so maybe one model even dies here. Yes, given that they have really low health uh, to begin with. But on the other side, there's what I told you, um, um, aggressive move with this uh, cultist. You can see the damage isn't um, the worst and also the durability is really good. So you will be able to decap here. A really nice decap here and defended the decap here. So pretty much equal for now. But uh, you have your relic already. Um, and here is your first assault plaguering squad. They only start with two, so they are, for starting only with two, they are really expensive, but the reinforcement cost is really cheap. So um, getting the squads out is uh, expensive, but keeping them alive is cheap, you could say. Now I have more stormtroopers here trying to get the decap. They will suffer quite a bit in the meantime, but um, they will be able to. So back and forth uh, decapping game for now. Here you have your first uh, Knalmor in a position that I, in a similar position that I have um, recommended. Um, it, maybe it's even better if the enemy comes through, uh, that the AOE is pretty pretty high around it. Um, now he has the uh, that he has the assault plague marines here. He can now finally cap this one. Also being defensive here, you see here the damage over time is really really big. Uh, around this Gnolmore you don't want to uh, stick around you want to shoot it from afar if possible of course and it also sticks around quite a bit you can see here the corrosion stuff here on the other side we have the uh, salt break marines he now adds the uh, gifted repository I had said or recommended to get two assault marines out here uh, stays with one has not attached the leader yet he has splits them or he had at some point now splits them to uh, be able to tie up two range squad and now here comes the coldest support um, there's nothing really that holds you back to reinforce them to max as the range damage they deal is really nice especially as you can see here the morale damage is also really high so these are your range support units you don't really need uh, range black marines for the most part as you have really strong coldest the damage against buildings isn't the highest but um, yeah you can get ignore more which he does here, the second normal in an offensive position now. He has now the gift um, of repository and he gets the di disgustingly resilient upgrade for the charge and more HP for your assault marines. Once this is out, these guys become uh, exponentially more dangerous. They have now, with the leader attached, 4.1k health. We will see how much this jumps up once they have the upgrade. This thing has now uh, been upgraded, so uh, the cultists need to run away. I think it will take too much damage now. Um, I don't want to miss when the upgrade hits. 
um, the upgrade will hit momentarily so we will see how the HP jumps and also you see here it's uh, 1k more health and they now have this uh, cool charge which enables them to finally connect with the stormtroopers and deal some damage. The Lord is busy tying up squads here and the cultists are still here, an offensive turret even. Um, interesting, he, uh, made uh, possible with the Gnallmore, the turret itself does quite a lot of damage um, considering uh, that it is a turret. The, the range isn't the greatest but I think it has a small AOE effect as well so really really nice turret overall allows him now to challenge the position here <coughs> these uh, cultists almost died but now get uh, attached to the squad here um, are these flamers? I think these are flamers um, either flamers or grenade launchers I would um, suggest that a grenade launcher would have been better because they have also the chance maybe to disrupt the enemy a bit um, yeah and now that they have to charge they yeah no way you can deal with them here's tier two three on the way tier tier two minus tier three would have been a bit early but he is tier two on the way now he only got for one assault marine um, you may um, go for two or even mix up my builds and get a ranged uh, plague marine as well you can see you have two more <coughs> supply to fill up with other than that he uh, did not got the uh, ranged um, the, the HP upgrade because it's really expensive so he um, said he wants a faster tier 2 which I can see and he gets another generator in preparation for vehicles he has a really good position now as well that he has set up a defense position here with a Gnallmore and a turret here on this side so um, he has the ec economic economy advantage as well here has the middle point as well for some good vision to see that these stormtroopers coming up uh, so we they try to uh, trade at least some points here but <sighs> I tell you what the, the damage against buildings is uh, really bad for hell guns so you want to go a little closer maybe for your flamers to uh, fire I guess now it has the ranged uh, that um, how should I say the range damage um, a buff upgrade why does he do have this because for uh, havocs you want to have havocs in tier 2 as soon as you can for hand or vehicles the range damage increase is really good for havocs he also gets the havoc upgrade so he will get for go for havocs at some point because he has one champion already here he now can has exactly three pop caps so he can get havocs out um, I would assume at some point or as soon as possible but he has the upgrades for the havocs but he does not go for havocs yet <coughs> he prioritizes um, here you can see how it looks like the seed got uh, pushed over and now they deal they suffer quite a lot of damage oh it's actually two this one was matured as well so we have now two gnomos here as well holy hell um, yeah these get wiped the other one your plague marines here with a 6.25k health just moving around um, dealing s damage um, I think this was a poison grenade yes this must have been a poison grenade from those um, another gnoll more build to be offensive this is the last one you can build uh, this one actually decayed already fully so you can get uh, another one as well now he goes for the Plague Havocs and for Blight Runes at the same time, a little indecisive. Um, either you go for one and then the other. Um, indecisive in the sense that he got all the upgrades first. I would um, recommend it getting the squad out on the field so he can move to the front and then you get the upgrades for it on the way. So you have it um, on the front fighting a little earlier. But yeah, nobody's perfect. Um, you can see here that they can challenge even three squads of stormtroopers and they are listing both because they are just that hard to deal with. Um, do we have seen the healing ability? I think this one is the healing ability used. You can um, see the health skyrocketing up again. The health is not a straight up. Um, the heal is not a straight up heal. It's basically a regeneration enhancer you could think of. So these are not dying anytime soon and now that there are the first 
buffed up blight drone, so the, the more HP blight drone. Um, yeah, this is pretty much game over already. But um, one little thing that I said in the video before in the, in the safe game, Mandarin moved them a little uh, more to the front. Now only one, the, the bottom one, is firing, not the top one. He would deal even more damage if he would have moved it a little uh, further. Where are your Havocs? Havocs? Here. And he built even another Havoc? No. No, he has... Oh, he has actually enough uh, pop caps, so maybe he built one. And now you can see these Havocs um, deal with these uh, Gamera. You can see that the leader has a melter gun. And um, accuracy, as I said before, isn't the greatest, but um, these guys are good against everything basically with the upgrade so this is really good and now we have also a stormark interceptor which is a really strong um, answer to almost anything um, especially uh, as it deals so much damage has got such big range but this is only uh, buying him time he has lost all of his points so the economy advantage now is on number side he can also upgrade yes this with entropy cannon so we have something to say against the Stormhawk he should oh yeah has already upgraded this one as well and the Stormhawk would need to uh, run around the map to deal with them but yeah the Stormhawk here is only thing keeping uh, Creed in the game for now but if he gets a little closer uh, it may not uh, live for long there are second Blake Havoc's uh, squad firing away now that it has this entry commands poof this one gets killed. This is not a cheap unit indeed, so this is GG right here, right now. Oof! I will finish the guide up with the last moments of this replay here. Um, thanks uh, to Number for giving me some inputs, uh, some thoughts of him and this replay, of course. Um, if you have anything to add, some questions about stuff that I haven't talked a bit uh, about or not, in detail enough please please tell me in the comments um, again stay constructive don't hate <laughs> don't hate hate the player hate the game no really <laughs> it is uh, that early in the new patch so this might or might not be a um, complete guide for it but yeah as usual guys thanks for watching and see you in the next video bye bye